I am Jason D'Souza. I am the guitarist and the backup vocalist of the Cognac Net, and you are watching Rhythm Nation TV. As far as I know, I've always been interested in music. My parents pretty much brought me up in a music environment. You know, I was introduced to bands like uh, the Beatles, like the Eagles, Crosby, Stills and Nash since I was a kid. And I've always been listening to music ever since, you know. My mom taught me how to play the guitar as well, which again just sparked since I was a kid. I've gone through a lot of instruments. Um, I learned the piano, I learned how to play the violin, I even play the drums here and there, you know. But my mom actually, I've always looked at the guitar as, I've always been fascinated. It was like six strings and people are making music out of it, you know. So my mom actually showed me how to play like the first few chords and it just kind of picked up from there. Flipped on the radio and our song was playing. Rose Color Glasses was playing. And like for me, that was like, wow, that's amazing, you know? Like to have something that you have worked on, that you have like physically played, just play back at you at like a radio station where you don't even, we didn't even expect it to play, you know? So we, it was quite shocking and it was great. Not often enough. But I, tr I play my guitar every day. I try to play at least an hour every day, you know, like even if it's playing anything. There are so many. I've always been, um, Kurt Cobain being one of my favorites, you know, he's one of my favorite writers. I love, I'm a huge fan of Nirvana. In terms of guitaring, I've always been a Jerry Cantrell fan, you know, like he plays for, um, he plays for Alice in Chains and I just love the way he opens out chords, you know, instead of just playing a power chord, he'll just play the whole thing and opens up much better and I'm also a huge Tool fan, my music diversifies and Adam, like Adam Jones is one of my all-time favorite guitarists, but just the way he looks at life in general, you know, so that is... Those would be my main mentors in guitaring. Yes, it was Back in Black. <laughs> that was the first song I learned how to perform. Yep, uh, my mom is a huge Beatles fan. She is also a vocal trainer. So she pretty much got me into music very early. You know, I hated learning the piano, but she made me learn it. And I thank her for that right like now. Yeah, my dad is into event management. So I've been, uh, I've been around the live music scene as well, you know, and we used to do a lot of road trips together and just listen, they, they always listened to music. Music has always been a part of our life. My parents used to not like me listening to rock music when I was a kid. So I had to like sneak in CDs, you know, I had to wait for them to go to sleep. Then I would open up, like switch on MTV. Back then they used to show great music. And I remember listening to System of a Down's song Chops Away. And that was a song unlike any other song that I'd ever heard. And I was just hooked onto that artist. I like to believe personally that uh, we played recently up in Kohima, which is up in the northeast, and there they have their tribes, you know, their Nagaland tribes. And one of the tribes is called the Cognac tribe. And the great thing is when we went to perform, like they called our name one by one, and we got on stage and they gave us a scarf, which was knitted by the Cognac tribe, you know. But uh, David keeps mentioning that there are two parts as to, you know, like, you choose path A and path B, you know, like you end up choosing path B and missing path A, but path B turning out to be the better one, you know. 
that's not my story that I like to tell people. <laughs> I like to prefer the whole Cognac tribe. We, I love Northeast Indian people and I love the Northeast in general. That is my mecca. It's a mix of everything actually. Storytelling is obviously important, of course, if there is a story to tell, but lyrics are very important. The way you portray whatever you're trying to say, you know, it could be about anything. It could be Blink 182's song, Happy Holidays, you know, like that song was just about nothing, but the way they portrayed it was hilarious and they did it really well, you know. Uh, for me personally, it's all about melody. If I hear a guitar riff or even if, a, even if it's rhythm, you know, like a drum beat that just catches my ear, that's the main thing about it, you know. So that's what I, that's the first thing that actually catches my attention in music. I am a guitarist, you know, in, like at first then I start writing lyrics, you know, so for me I'll It'll be a guitar riff, it'll be a bass line, it might even be a drum, but I focus on the music aspect first and then I go for phrasing, you know, like a phrase that'll sound great, that complements the music, that complements the drum sound, and then I'll put lyrics on top. I don't think I've had that moment yet, you know, like we. We are all running through that, we hope it happens, you know. We are all working really hard to stay, stay on the road so that when the bus shoots in, we can all get on and go ahead, you know. But we haven't had that moment. I haven't had that moment yet. Yeah, of course, creating the music is the important thing you know like that's the initial stage to performing it but I also enjoy performing that music live you know even when we are recording our stuff we try to get the live version of our music in there and then we um, then we take it further from there you know but all like creating music is great but when you play it live with the band be it when you're practicing you know be it when you're playing it live in front of people, you know. I always like jamming with them, you know, like when you when you look at the drummer and you are playing in coordination with him, you know, so that that's it's it's like a mix of both. I hope my guitar's in tune. I hope all my patch cables are working. I hope all the hot women are standing in the front row. <laughs> Currently with the Cognac Net, we are uh, on the creative process. We are writing our third, we are writing our third, second EP, but third release, you know. So I've got a couple of projects of my own that I'm working on where I'm actually going to be playing guitar and singing, you know. So that's something exciting to look forward to. Not surprisingly, but our biggest fans are from the Northeast, which is great because that's our favorite place to perform. I don't think we've had a bad gig, you know, like a bad response or a bad experience ever playing. We've always enjoyed ourselves every time. David and I keep answering this one. The moment we are opening up for Conan O'Brien, we are successful. <laughs> no, success, I don't know. When someone actually meets us and appreciates our music to a point, more than the gimmick of actually getting on stage and playing, yeah, that's great. We want people to really appreciate us. But the moment someone can actually come up to us and say, you know, your music has changed our life. And because music has changed mine. Like, I've gone through hard times like easily because of music, you know, and if someone, the, the moment someone comes up to us and says, dude, your song did this for me, that's what success is. Zero, playing for zero music festival. That 
that festival, the lineup for that festival was amazing. It's hard work if you're getting into music just to get the women, just to get into a drug related life, you know, it's not like that. Don't take it lightly, take it seriously, do your legwork, do your homework and most importantly do your work, you know. Just get out there and get your music out there as much as you can.